Today we're going to be making contoured face masks with adjustable straps. This mask has a single adjustable strap. This part goes around your head and then this will tie behind your neck. You can also make adjustable elastic. This option is really nice if you're planning to give your mask as a gift or to someone that isn't there with you to fit the mask. This mask has two adjustable ribbon ties on the sides, so it can tie behind your ears or behind your head, but this gives you the option of selecting really pretty ribbon. You could also use fabric ties, like the single strap. Let's get started. For this mask, you're going to need cotton fabric for the exterior of the mask. You're also going to need fabric for the lining. And if you like to, you can use interfacing on the back of your main fabric. About eight by 15 inches of fabric should be good for any of the sizes on the pattern. To begin, take your main fabric and fold it in half with right sides together. Then cut out your pattern piece. The free pattern is available on my website and is linked below. There are several different sizes for this pattern and today I'm going to be making a size medium. Place your pattern piece on top of the fabric and trace. Do the same thing for the lining. If you're adding interfacing, fold the end of the pattern back on the interfacing line. And then trace and cut the pattern just like you did the fabric. Let's fuse the interfacing to the back of our main fabric. Lay your fabric right side down and place the interfacing on top of your fabric. Make sure that the rough side of the interfacing touches the fabric because the rough side is the glue. And press. Take your mask pieces and place them right sides together. We're going to stitch along the front curve with a quarter inch seam allowance and do the same thing for the lining. Press the seam open with your fingers. Once it's laying flatter, press with your iron. You can use just the tip of your iron for the curve. Clip the curves of the seam, especially near the nose bridge. This will help it to lay better. Repeat this process for the lining. Once both are complete, you're ready to put them together. Lay your exterior fabric right side up. Place the lining right side down on top of it. Align the seams and pin all the way around. Now that it's pinned, I'm ready to sew. I'm going to sew all the way around, but I have to leave an opening to turn. I want the opening to be at least an inch wide if possible, and I'm going to leave it on one end. When I stitch the ends, I still like to sew the corners a bit. If you're making a really small size, you can just stop at the corners if you need to. Sewing the corners will help me make sure that I turn it the correct amount later. Let's go to the sewing machine and sew all the way around with a quarter inch seam allowance. Clip the four corners and clip the curves. Pinking shears are great for this if you have them. If not, just do little clips with your regular scissors. Turn your mask right side out through the opening. Use a turning tool to poke out the corners and edges. 
Make sure the seams are turned all the way to the edges and make sure that the opening is tucked inside. You should tuck it in about a quarter of an inch. And now let's press. If you'd like to, you can now top stitch all the way around your mask with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I don't do that just because I like the look without the top stitching, but it's totally up to you if you'd like it to lay flatter. Top stitching isn't a bad idea. Next, we're going to tuck under the ends to make our adjustable channels. Turn your mask right side down. Along the ends, draw a line one and a quarter inches from the edge. I'm using a heat erase pen for this. And do the same on the other side. Take the edge of your fabric and fold it over to touch your line. This will make an overlap of 5 eighths of an inch. And press. Do the same on the other end. So I'm going to sew this in place by sewing an eighth of an inch away from the edge. I'm going to sew all the way from the top edge to the bottom edge of the mask. You can sew this step either from the right side or the wrong side of the fabric. I like to sew from the right side just so I can make sure it looks nice on the front. But if you're worried about not catching the fabric underneath, you can definitely sew from the other side. Your mask is now ready to add whichever type of ties you like. You can add elastic, ribbon, or fabric ties. The channels that we've created on the sides of our mask here are appropriate for ties that are up to about 3 eighths of an inch wide. If you want to use a tie that's wider than that, you may need to fold the edges over just a little bit more to make a wider channel. For this mask, I'm going to add a single fabric tie and I'll show you how that works. I'm going to make a fabric tie that is 3 eighths of an inch wide. To do this, I've cut a strip of fabric that is 1 and a quarter inches wide by the width of the fabric, so it's about 42 inches long. And press. And then I'm going to take the edges and press them to the center. And then I'm going to fold it in half again. This is really tiny, so if you're worried about burning your fingers, a silicone spatula works great to hold it. Now I'm going to stitch the two folds together with about a sixteenth of an inch seam allowance. You just want to keep it small and make sure to sew both of those folds. Now I'm going to trim off the selvage. You can do this before you start as well. And I'm going to finish the edge with some fray check. And I'll let that dry. I'm ready to add my tie to my mask. Take a small safety pin and poke it through the end of the tie. Place the tie up through the channel on the right hand side. Pull the tie up and over and bring it down through the channel on the left hand side. Make sure it's not twisted. I can tell mine's not twisted because the stitches are on the outside, on the outside, and there's no loops in between. And pull it through and center the tie. I now have the loop that can go behind my head and the two ties that I can tie behind my neck. But the advantage to this is that you only have to tie once. On this mask, I'm going to add two ties, one to each side so I can tie it either behind my ears or behind my head. Like with the fabric ties, I'm going to put a safety pin on the end and guide it through the channel. Elastic works pretty much the same way. Take your safety pin and slide it through each side. You can tie it in a knot 
trim off the ends. I cut my elastic about 13 inches long, but you may need a little more depending on the size of mask you're doing. And it's good to give a little extra, especially if you're giving this to people where you don't know the exact fit. Once you have your elastic through the channels, you can try it on and adjust the elastic ends as you need to. It may be easier if you have someone to help you tie the elastic while you hold the mask. Once you know the length, slide the knots into the channel. And now they're hidden and you won't see them on your final mask. These masks fit nicely into my keychain mask holder. It's linked below. Simply fold up the nose bridge, place the ties in the center, and fold it into thirds. Mm -hmm.